Hi, I'm Nari Dansari, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create this cool effect with Niagara System, Dark Hole Galaxy, right? So, without any further ado, let's begin. Please, before we start, if you wanna help me, and if you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. So, for creating this effect, it is easy to do. There is a lot of method to create it, but we will start from a simple one, and, and next we use a scratch pad and write our own algorithm in Niagara, right? So, Niagara has a lot of modules but in this video i'm going to show you how you can create your own module right so for that let's just go to content drawer and in here i want to create another folder for just this effect okay i want to call it dark hole okay and in this folder i want to create a niagara system okay just choose the first one and in here empty because it is for tutorial purposes okay add it and after that hit finished and call it ns dark hole okay or whatever you want to call it it's okay right so let's just delete this one we want to create it from scratch right so double click on this in here first of all i want to use gpu simulator because when you are in cpu you are limited in the amount of particle that you can spawn right so for that go to property and change this to gpu so you can create a lot of particle right so after that click on this fixed bound and now we are in gpu right so in here on emitter update i want to spawn some particle a spawn rate in here let's just spawn a lot of them like 10,000 we will decrease increase it in no time right for a start let's just use 10,000 next thing to do I want all of this particle to spawn on a shape right so let's just go to internet to show you something just search for dark hole galaxy to see how it's look like right so you can see click on image on tools in here change the size to large so we can get a really big one right so for example this one you can see it to start on a circle and it will spread out right so for that let's just choose a shape in here on particle spawn we want to spawn it on a shape click on this plus on this suggested list you can see there is a shape location and in this shape i want to change this to torus okay so let's just go up and you can see the torus in here right it's cool and let's just decrease this spawn rate to 100 for example so you can see it it a spawn on a torus right everything makes sense right so after that i want to add a force in here and the force that i want to use is vortex force okay so it give us an error because whenever we add a force we should add this solve force and velocity and now you can see right now we are close to what we want right so now let's just increase this value to 10,000 and i think that's a little bit cool and um what we can do about that let's just add another force that is called curl noise force to add some randomness to this right and let's just decrease this to 50 for example to randomize it more i think that's cool for our dark hole right let's just add some drag as well to make it realistic okay i don't want to change the value value is good we can change it later right and now I want to go to initial particle and increase the lifetime of the particles like 20, right? Right now the size of these particle is a lot, so let's just go to a sprite size mode in here because we are at the sprite renderer, right? So click on this and choose uniform and change it to something like 2, okay? No, it's look like a <laughs> a dark hole right it's more look like that so what we can do next let's just decrease this lifetime to 10 and go to shape location and change the um, radius of this to a little bit lower so you can see it clearly it's look beautiful right so now let's just add some color to it okay color and in this color i want to change it to color from curve at the beginning i want it to be red okay the green and blue should be zero and the red at the beginning so let's just hit double click in here to create another one and at the end we want to be red but a little bit darker i think that's cool let's just save and see it you can see it looks a lot better right so again let's just double click on here make it a little bit dark and in here again i want it to be red from here i don't want it to be white at the end so let's just double click on this make it red in here again and a little bit to the white and you can play with this color but there is a better way to do these things and that's called a scratch pad so if you go here in your emitter in your system or your emitter go to a scratch pad you can see you can create some scratch pad in here so for example in here we did use shape location okay and in this shape location, we use it to uh, spawn our particle on a shape, right? So let's just delete that. I don't want to do that. And we use some color in here. And I don't, I don't want to do that as well. I want to use the exact color that is in here, okay? 
So let's just click on this one. You see, I just searched for Dark Hole Galaxy and I opened this. So right click on it and save it. On desktop, for example, I did download some of them, but let's just save this one as well. And no, let's just import it in our Unreal Engine 5, right? So the one that I did just download is this one. Okay, I want to use the color of this, right? So Control Shift S to save everything and we did delete the shape and we did delete the color but i want to create our own module so you can see this initialized particle this particle state vertex force and all of that are just some modules if you click on this vortex works for example you can see there are some nodes in here that create something for us right it add those force those vertex force for us okay now we want to create our own for creating our own on this particle spawn for example click on this plus go down in here and click on new scratch pad module okay and let's just name it in here f2 on it so you can name it right i want to call it my shape and color okay i want to call it this and now if you go here you can see our own module is in here and you can see this icon uh, beside this checkbox right so it means that we did create this in here okay again double click on it go here let's just let's just increase the size of this so you can see it clearly and first of all i want to spawn all of this particle on a shape right so let's just go to content drawer go to all and in here search for torus there is one in here if you double click on it you can see it's just a torus right it's in content example right so we want to use this static mesh for spawning our particles right so in here let's just click on this plus and search for a static mesh right so there is two of them one is the is in data interface a static mesh and one is in this object the one that i need is this static mesh and you can name it but i don't want to name it and you can see it will add it to here so and you can see it tell it that this is an input and in here what we should do i want to get all the triangles on on our torus just drag and drop from here and say get triangle and in here get triangle ws okay and it will give us all the triangle that is in this torus right if we you can see it here okay so in this torus if you go to show and in here just check this complex collision you can see let me decrease this camera speed so you can see it clearly there are some triangles here and we can get those triangles okay so with that with this get triangle ws we get all those triangles right so in here let me bring this out in here and what I want to do in here, it needs a triangle number. So you can see there is like 2000 triangles in this static mesh, right? And in here, if we want to get all those triangles, if we set triangle zero, it will get just one triangle, right? And in here, you can see there is 2000 of them. So what we can do about that, we want to get all of those triangles. In here, we can assign some value in here. So for example, we can... Uh, get all those triangles randomly if we put one in here for example it will great it will get the triangle number one if we put two in here it will get to triangle number two right so i want to use some method to get all those triangles okay and for that i want to drag and drop from here and say random triangle okay and with this random triangle we can get all the triangle of this torus randomly just connect all of these to here and it this random triangle needs a random Random info and for creating that random info we can search for random range integer and with this calculate random range vector we can set a minimum and maximum value so for example from zero to something big right and in here we can connect this to this random info and it will convert it so it will be able to connect it to here okay and the random seat you can just expose this seat to Niagara system but let's just put five in here for example right you can do whatever you want with that and with this information no we get all the triangle randomly and no we can set the position with these on our torus okay how we can do that in here in this map set you can see this is map get we can get whatever we want in here and we can set whatever we want in here you remember in here in our niagara emitter if you go to window and open up these parameters in here there there is a lot of parameter in here that we can set and get right so in this scratch pad let's just close this parameter what i want to do i want to set the position of our particles on this torus so what we did we get all the 
the triangles on our torus, okay? And we get it randomly. No, we want to position all of the particle on these triangles of our torus, right? So click on this plus and search for position, okay? And now you can see the core parameter, the particle position in here. Click on it and connect these to here, like this. And compile, apply, scratch, save. So now that we save this, let's just organize this a little bit. And if we now go to our system overview, in this shape, my shape and color, the scratch pad that we just create, we can assign our torus to here and here. Now we can get that. And now you can see we have the exact same effects with shape location, okay? But we created our own, right? So now you know how a scratch pad work, okay? I will create a lot of example with this scratch pad so you will learn a lot with it, okay? Now what I want to do, I want to use the color of this on our particles, right? We don't want to colorize it ourselves, okay? Because we can't do it uh, as cool as real world, right? So so for doing that, if you go to our system overview in this sprite renderer, there is some material here. So we can add some material. So let's just create the material. Just go to dark hole that is in here close this search and right click create a material if you don't know about material please watch my playlist of video about material you will learn a lot we start from basic to advanced this material i want to call it m for material dark hole okay double click on it to open it and what i want to do in here i want to just bring this okay this texture and connect it to emissive color because we want to have some light in it some glowing light right so right off the bat it's looked like this let's just again search for our torus to, to see it on that click on it and go to your material click in here and now you can see it so it should uh, for example, if our particle is spawning from here, it, it should get the color in here, okay? And if it spawns in here, it should have the color of here, right? So for doing that, you should use a dynamic parameter. If you don't know about dy dynamic parameter, I did create a video just about dynamic parameter. Just search for that, okay? And in here, we want to use two of these for our UV of our texture why let me save this to show you why i need that if we go to our niagara system and in this sprite renderer search for our dark hole material that we just create you can see it will it will use whole image as as for our particle and it's not cool right so we want to do it um for each triangle or each pixel right so how we can do that we can use this dynamic parameter and we can access and set this dynamic parameter in our Niagara system so in here I want to change the name of this to you and the next one to be please watch my video about dynamic parameter and in here I want to search for or make float 2 because this UV accept float 2 right so let's just connect this to here connect this to here and connect this to uv's okay and now with that we just have the color of one pixel and we can access this dynamic parameter in our niagara system so let's just go to our niagara system but before doing that let's just save this and in our niagara system in our scratch pad that we just create what i want to do i want to use those dynamic parameters okay and in here we can set those dynamic parameters just search for that dynamic parameter index zero and in here because because you will remember in here we use UV of this texture we can go to our scratch pad in here and in here let's just get another one in here and search for get triangle and here get triangle UV okay and for this triangle that we want to get from our torus we can again use these values that random values that we just create in here okay and with that we can set dynamic parameter okay let's just come compile apply and save and now you can see it did get those colors okay it's cool and we are done with our custom scratch pad i will talk about the scratch pad a lot because we can do a lot of cool things with this scratch pad right so right now we have it let's just add it to our scene it, it is in dark hole oh, let's just close this search and add this in here and you can see we create this cool effect for our dark hole right now let's just get crazy with that go to a spawn rate and change this to for example 100 thousand and no i think it's look a lot better right just play with all of those values and you can create a lot of cool things so now that we create our effect let's just go to our material in here and what i want to do i want to change this texture sample right click on it and convert it to parameter and i want to call it texture whatever you want to call it and now with that if you save it and 
create an instance of this material if you don't know about instances just watch my playlist of video and now with this instance we can set it in our sprite render in here okay so let's just drag and drop it this instance to here now it use this instance right so if we double click on it and check this checkbox let me dock it here so we can change it and go to our level and now if we go here and change our texture okay for example this one and it will change it like this and it look cool right change it to this change it to this and apply it to your system right so that was it guys for this video in this video you learn about vertex color and scratch pad and after this video we will talk about the scratch pad a lot so please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel thank you thank you thank you very much for watching bye